Food Project is really there to offer a support for groups that have got a vision, uh, a spark or a seed that they want to see run in their community. Well, can I welcome you all to the Nightingale Community Gardens? I think it's brilliant. Yes. Yes. I'm Councillor Keith Hatton, a Vale councillor and also a community councillor. Got hold of the chairman of the residence group in order that we could work together for the benefit of the community to develop this into something that uh, the community would love and be able to enjoy. Initially, when we were offered the site, we did a letter drop in the immediate area to ask for their responses, to get their ideas, and the overwhelming idea was for community allotments, community gardens. Because it's local, I can drop the children off at school, come and do a little bit, go away, do something else, just before collecting the children come back, or water in the evening. So it works out very well from that point of view. Um, I'm Angela Peterkin and I work at the local infant school um, and my role there is to do the gardening with the children and over the years I've often had the experience of children being very enthusiastic about what we've grown at school and the parents coming to me and saying how do we do this, how do we grow potatoes and things like this. We've had children whose parents say, oh, she won't eat vegetables. Um, she just doesn't eat vegetables. She'll eat fruit, but she won't eat vegetables. But you give them a pea that's just come straight off the, off the plot. You open up that pod and, and they think they're like sweets. So they can't get enough of them. So when this garden project came along, it was an ideal opportunity to garden with the whole family. It's absolutely fantastic. The ownership that's been taken on certainly by a dedicated group of individuals is incredible. We decided to meet on a regular basis, perhaps say Sunday at two o'clock for a couple of hours. We invite people to come along and we get a dedicated number who come along to do work for those two hours. Well I'm Stuart Hockley, I'm a retired builder uh, in Dinners Palace. One of the uh, exciting parts of um, this project is when we set the sites up with the 25 plots um, we didn't know what the future was going to be like and what the weather was going to be like and as this year was quite remarkable with the weather um, it was an exciting uh, exercise for us all of us because we're all novices we haven't got much idea and uh, it was a good project and it's it's worked out great we use funding from Tidy Towns Wales. We were also fortunate to have grant funding from the Community Foodie Project. We're also looking at ways of being more sustainable. We want to improve our water catchment. We are making a charge every year. The initial charge for this year may be on the high side. We're not certain because we will have a water bill coming in towards the end of the year. I think we're fairly optimistic that in fact there will be spare cash there in order to be able to purchase additional items like cordon trees. We're getting a lot of donations too fortunately from the local community which is good. I mean today for instance we're having a raffle as well which will also help to provide additional funding. Great to be here in Dinas Powers today in the sunshine and um, what you've done here is absolutely amazing as has already been said and uh, rightly deserved. Um, all the hard work that's been put into this uh, project by so many people and it just goes to show that even a, a little idea, a little seedling can, can grow into something as special as this so very well done indeed and it, the idea uh, will, will spread across the, the rest of Wales and other people will take up the initiative. What's been particularly lovely with Community Foodie, which is quite revolutionary, is that it operates over three different counties. We're working together, it operates in Torvine, the Vale of Morgan and Bridgend. The three counties are working together, it's actually led by Bridgend County Borough Council, but it's, it's been a, a really excellent example of how uh, three counties can work together to deliver a, a, a European programme or just a programme in general. What we've learned collectively between the three, three counties, we can, we can share to other people, share to other counties, and um, it's something that could be run, run throughout, and you could see Community Foodie on within every single county of the UK. I'm uh, Mike, Mike Davis. I'm the chairman of the, of the Community Garden. It was once called a community and wood, uh, woodland, but the, the woodland part of it's too much work for us at the moment. 
when they knocked down the, the old swimming pool yeah, it was just a pile of rubble. And somebody said, well, what are we going to do with it? And the idea was to have allotment. They had to keep allotment. And then we looked at it, but there's so many complications with having allotment. We said to turn it into a community garden where everyone in the village could use, use it. Now, the problem is, because it's industrial land, that we can't use this as an allotment. That's where we go raise beds. But at least it's been reclaimed, because otherwise it would just be lost to the community. So many things are lost to the community. And like I said, you, you have to stand up. You have to say, no, we are going to do this with this land. When the plans are made, first of all, uh, we do want these, these uh, raised beds in the plans, and uh, just to see what it looked like on the plan. But the only trouble is, when we got, came down here, yeah, when we first started, I said, oh, whoa, whoa, what's happened here? Yeah? These are too small. So we had to <laughs> have, it all, have it all changed again then. So the, the larger beds are made. So it's important to be on site when contractors are there. Yeah. Oh, and yes. sometimes what, what you have on your plan yeah. doesn't always work out no. with the reality it, of the it, site. It, 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 when did you start? You've got to be here, uh, just keep buying things. And, and although you've written things down, you think, oh, that's not right. Mm. You've, got to, you've got to change it. This is like industrial land that's been reclaimed and reused. There's so much potential. I mean, it saved me a fortune this year. I mean, I paid 10, 15 pounds more for seeds. And I think if I already had about 70, 80 pounds worth of produce, even from this small plot, I've had so much produce and my freezer's full. I'm buying a new freezer next year, I'm having a big plot and I'm buying a big freezer. I come from the 50s when I started my garden, didn't I? And everybody done their garden in days. It was lockments as long the railway lines. You'd go on the train and you're to Cardiff and you'd pass perhaps a dozen lockments the, along the track. What's the difference? Do you think that the community garden's going to make people share more? Do you think it helps? Oh, definitely, to it, does share more? it does already. Mm. It does make people share more. Well, when I came down to the open day, I came down because um, dad's involved, a lot of family members are involved, you've got an auntie down here. But, but this group's been going for about three, four years now, and the only minutes they've had is since I've become an um, secretary. So you can't trace back the history of the group, but you need to do it. Mm. You need to be able to look back and say, well, we had permission off this board to do this. But there's no record of it. And they had a constitution, but it wasn't fit for purpose. Mm. We have to change our constitution now, because as it is now, individual members are, are responsible rather than the group. So, so for the protection of the, the individuals on this committee, if they make a wrong decision, even though it may, may, may be made with the good intentions, if they make a wrong decision, they can be liable for prosecution. Which, so this is a really important yeah. fact you'd like to tell other gardeners, is to become to get the correct constitution. Yes, and be a, a good legal con have a good legal constitution so that if the group is responsible for the decisions down here and if anything goes wrong, then they won't be financially liable, which is what people are afraid of now. We don't want to get involved in things thinking, well, if this goes wrong, we'll have to pay. Will it cost me anything? Yeah, I had them on my radish leaves, Dad. And I had them in the dark ones, eating away into my cabin. Would you say that you're eating more produce? Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah because things are so dear now um, and it's nice and you meet people you talk and you, you know, the banter and meet new people new people and old yeah but, uh, and people walk past and they come in and have a look and you're glad you got involved oh well yes but it, it's a bit tired the thing is i just said to me and john today i'm 71 now johnny's 72 uh, can we keep on for a couple of years mm. somebody's got to take it over but Johnny, I finish, what's going to happen? That's my biggest worry now. Yeah. You need to pass this information on. I mean, I've, I'm 47 and I've learned a lot the last couple of years that I never even realised. I mean, it was hard in the beginning trying to, you know, pick off caterpillars off the cabbage and squish them. You know, because I'm not a girly girl, but I'm not that kind of girly yeah. there, you know. But you have to, otherwise you eat your produce away. Whereas before you think, oh yeah, you get it from Tesco, you don't worry about things like caterpillars and things like that. But yeah, it needs to expand. It needs you need to get the knowledge from the older members now before it's too late. Because too many times you said, "Oh, I wish I knew how to do this," and that person that could have taught you that is gone. The community foodie in Torvine um, is uh, basically a program where we introduce people into learning how to grow their own food um, on sites where otherwise um, not much is happening: rough ground or underutilized land. We, we grow quite a lot of uh, different things, um, for potatoes, chilies, tomatoes, courgettes, and the aim is to 
uh, encourage people to eat healthily um, and affordably. It um, started off as a, a food cooperative back in the day and steadily progressed and transformed into a social enterprise veg box scheme. Crops are obviously harvested out in the garden and we order stuff in for the veg boxes. Um, and once it gets delivered, we, we box it up in the morning using our volunteers um, and, and we deliver them all over to vine. Healthy living in general is quite a big aspect of the project. It's something we're very keen to, to promote through the veg box itself. But the main aim is to provide um, a bit more of a, a diverse range of produce in the boxes. Um, um, but as we are a social enterprise, uh, the main aim is to, to be financially self-sufficient. So all the profits we make here get reinvested back into the project in the form of uh, employee wages, volunteer expenses, uh, country classes and various like, community oriented activities. I'd love for the veg box to get more land. Um, I find it quite annoying that we have to buy quite so much from suppliers. I'd really love to be able to grow the majority of our own stuff um, for the boxes. Um, the support that Community Foodies um, provided is really is in two forms. We've got the access to expertise we wouldn't normally have ourselves. And we also have access to money and uh, that really helps us to, to push forward um, projects and get things developed in the garden. So a key example I suppose is the raised beds that will shortly be installed. Um, and it also means we can offer growing space to local schools and, and community groups and, and therefore get the community more involved in the project. Community foodie is definitely the support mechanism, so it's not the driver. Um, in that respect, as I said, we go in, we listen to the groups, we hear what their vision is, and we find out what skills or what knowledge or um, attributes they've already got, and we try and bring them out. What was it that inspired you all and the group to start this project? Well, to re-engage the community of all, um, that's community of all life stages and interests. Yeah, just reconnecting old friendships plus, you know, new people, um, new neighbours that have come to Tros as well. I've been here 16 odd years and I, you know, some of the people I didn't even know. Right, yeah. You know, it's brought the community all together and everything and, you know, just everybody helps each other and, you know, it makes a difference when, you know, you know that you've grown your own and it's like, oh, that's nice. Do some more, yeah. <laughs> so do you find you eat more vegetables? Oh gosh, yeah, we used to eat a lot of cabbages, can't you see in there? But yeah, we eat a lot more cabbage now. <laughs> well, every year is amazed that it hit this produce has grown like this in, in the past, well, six weeks. And um, well, the main, the main vision is that it was community spirit and that has really just gone th throughout the project. Um, so if anything, people are, coming up here to socialise just as much as growing. Have you done this before? before you, um, Pardon? Have you been growing much before? You, um... Nothing at all, only in the garden, in, at home in the borders. Wow. I think it's brought the community together. There's people that are living in a village now that we didn't know. And we've, we've met them since we've been up here, you know. So I think something like this is definitely beneficial to to a village or a community. We didn't want it uh, to be a private um, allotment. You know, it was a bit of a debate whether we'd be under vandalism, but um, I would say is if we open it to the community and everybody has a sense of ownership, that we're, that's not a problem. And it's great to see an old community together and this will make the place really, really, really grow. Thank you very much. Across towards the, the woodland here, we're going to have uh, polytunnels. Uh, we, we plan to have a lot of raised beds, 30 plus. Uh, on the northern boundary, we plan to have fruit trees and, and bushes. The many a story with community gardens is that you're talking about land, you're talking about trying to have access to land. and. Um, Land may look invisible on the top, and it might look like there's a layer of just a layer of grass there, but there isn't. There's there is ultimate winding bits of string and paperwork and layers of red tape that that that, that may seem invisible to the eye, but as soon as you start getting in there.
do you say about the, the complexity of having several landowners and land lords as mm. such is something other gardeners need to think about, other community gardeners need to be aware of? Yes, things aren't just as straightforward sometimes as, as, you, as they, they look. And uh, here we've got so many interested parties. We've got the other person who uses the existing road to access his house. We've got the commoners who graze the commons. Conservators of the commons have an interest. They, they act as controllers of the commons for, for, un, under law. The landlord of the commons, not everyone understands, but common land is all owned by someone, and that someone is the lord of the manor, and in our case, that's the Earl of Dunraven. And all these people have to be bought on side to some extent or another. We've, we've had advice and help from the community foodie, from uh, tidy towns and from various other a angles and, and nooks and crannies of Bridge End County Borough Council. Is there, is there a bit of advice you can give to the groups? Um, out there watching this with regards to patients and waiting? I think you really do have to try and get it across to people that n things do take time. It's going to be very, very difficult to get a thing like this up and running within a year. But of course, if you'd gone to a private landlord and asked to do this, it, it's perfectly possible that you'd have been able to do it almost without uh, the involvement of red tape. Hello, I'm Rhys and I'm part of our community garden in Anasodra. Yep, two bigger ones on this one, Rhys. Yeah, they look quite nice. Yeah. I'm Gladys, I designed the garden. Right, we've got um, cabbages, potatoes, beetroots, carrots, herbs over there. We've just dug the red onions up now and we've got the yellow onions here. It's done really well for the first year. Yeah. It's been really good. I'm well chuffed. And we haven't had as much trouble off, the, off any kids. No, <laughs> we pulled the onions up because one of them came in the other day. And we, had, we lost an onion. <laughs> and he was eating it going down the road. So, <laughs> yeah. Everything in this garden hasn't had any chemicals used. Nothing at all. Water and a seed and some manure. You know, that's all you need. It, nothing happens overnight. We probably had about three months of meetings designing and working out what we wanted to do with it. Mm. And then uh, probably another three months after that before any work was actually done. And we're standing here today, growing our own veg in our own garden, you know? Yeah. But it, it, won't ha it doesn't happen overnight. You've got to plan it, you've got to put a bit of effort into it. Everybody's eating their words now, and yeah. saying how nice it is. And yeah. They, and they all think, and, they, and they, all want one, <laughs> yeah. they all want one of their gardens like this of their own, but they're not willing to do it themselves. They're not willing to help. They want somebody, they think somebody's come out and done all this for, for us. For us. Well, we know we did yeah. all the hard work. Yeah, we planned <laughs> we it, did we organised it. it, we set Dug up our own it. group. Yeah. You know? Yeah. We've got the, tre we, I'm the treasurer. We've got, what are you glad? Chair. The chairwoman and, and the secretary. Mm -hmm. You know, taking all the minutes and things. And we have a meeting every month and decide and discuss what we can do with the garden and... With our community foodie, this definitely would not have happened. Definitely. All the support with the beds, the turning over of the ground, you've come to help us with organising stuff for open yeah. days. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of support and technical yeah. stuff that we haven't got mm -hmm. the, as much knowledge in. The biggest um, jobs that I had to do was actually identify land to, to grow on in the first place. Um, so a lot of my day-to-day -day role was finding out where I could set up land use agreements in the first place. Um, I was very lucky when I joined because there had already been a refurbishment of a, of a, a farmhouse manor and, um, and to, to that end there was a piece of land just waiting for somebody to go and do something with. It's very difficult to, to create a kitchen garden in this environment simply because there's so much stone underneath the topsoil. When I first came along, that's when they asked about raised beds. I couldn't imagine that we needed 36 tonnes of soil to fill these raised beds. And when we first started, we had about three volunteers to help. 
And I was thinking, we're not going to get dinner done in a week. But the um, foodie officer went and found a wonderful volunteer group and done an absolutely outstanding job in the most horrendous rain I could imagine. It was quite exciting in a way to see it happen and uh, if it wasn't for the, the foodie programme it wouldn't have happened to be honest but for us to see the raised beds arrive in itself was uh, an exciting time. Well we did quite a bit of research into the kind of crops the, the manor would have grown through various periods in time so we looked at the medieval period, um, Victorian period and World War II. We sort of focused on kind of crops we felt that we could manage ourselves, grow ourselves and, and uh, see what contribution we can make to the overall foodie program. The help that foodie has done with regards to finding grants and organising events and training and stuff like that, I think that has helped shape the group into a much better group than what it would have been if foodie wasn't here. So it was good having a worker on site to point them in the right direction and, and to give them a different perspective sometimes. Uh, people love it. They come here and it's part of the attractions of the manor now as people walk around the kitchen gardens and see what's being grown and they teach their children what these vegetables are, you know, so it's, it's quite exciting from that perspective. Because we now got the Slanarvon Manor Market here once a month, it brings in a lot more people to, to the actual grounds here and when the people are in and out of the market like we got now, there's, there are people walking around it's nice to see. So now they're coming down here, they can see what's being done here. They can see how easy it is. They can speak to volunteers. They can speak to whoever. It's showing people how easy it is to do things, I guess. We just finished our work, haven't we? Yeah, I think in Torvine, um, you've got a, um, a history of a loss of industry, um, loss of community through the loss of industry. A lot of uh, loss of unity of families as well as people have moved away from the area, so it's become quite isolated in many ways. So there was a there was a need for something to happen where people were being re-educated to grow in the way that their grandfathers had and had always been part of the community but had disappeared. And there's also a great need to reunite that community and, and um, get neighbours to speak to each other. And this was a fantastic tool. People are quite wasteful when it comes to food, so it's nice to see how it is actually done. And you think, oh, well, I think when you do that, when you see how it's actually done, you waste less and you, look, and you look after it more, and then you appreciate it more. And then that can spread from just growing a beetroot to looking after your garden, that can go to improving your street, improving your local park, your neighbourhood, and hopefully at some point they'll start improving the world. Community foodies role was and, and still is, is to support people coming through, through telephones, through inquiries that we've sent literature out. Can we grow? We've noticed a piece of, piece of land that we'd like to grow on. You know, where can we get help? Can you help us? And so we've gone and responded to that, um, to the point where we've actually had money to develop some sites so we do more than support. We can financially support the groups. 22, 23 families that got little plots up there. The motto of it when we started off was come and have a grow. So they're all now really up and running and really proud of what they've got. So come on, come and have a quick look. This little area where we're based has been, well, it was not a very pleasant area for a long, long time. This whole patch here now was derelict ground and had been for nearly 20 years. So it was a dumping ground. So the house foundation, I believe, is still under here. That's why we've had to use raised beds and things like that, because we keep hitting concrete blocks. And if you involve people right from the word go and let them help design things, build things, you'll find that they take ownership of it and it's looked after. We haven't had so much as a, a seed label pinch from the place in just over the 12 months that we've been here. So I think that's proof in the pudding. I was worried about you getting Fantastic. It keeps people informed of local, not just local, but obviously homegrown things. So it gives you the direct information. It's really good at this and handy. That's very good. What we've encountered is the enthusiasm, which is refreshing. The energy, 
um, in this project is, is quite phenomenal. But the, the, the project's got three schools involved. They spent six months researching it, and coming here, they learned more than they did in six months in half an hour. We've been growing a lot of stuff in our like school area. It's like we've been growing like lettuce and some <coughs> flowers and all stuff like that. And we've been if we have any old shoes or anything like that, we like try to make them decorative over there. And then like we try to make everything as we can, and we try to do a lot for like nature and all that. And then today we got Buckingham Palace, <laughs> yeah. where there was a lot of bricks and wood and stuff and hay like that. So like all the bugs can come and help our garden in there. This is a, a dip that's been made from the chives and the onions and garlic and everything that's been grown in the garden also. When was the lettuce picked? This morning, that fresh was this morning. Fresh, freshly picked this morning. You've been involved a lot with the school, haven't you? you I have, yes. Taking yeah. the school. So you've seen the impact that the garden's had on the school? It has had, it's had a, a tremendous impact on the school. Um, due to the fact that we've had the children come down, we've shown them and teaching them how to plant the vegetables. Yeah, we've tried loads of new different vegetables and different fruit. And lots of people have been coming up and like buying flowers and helping out our garden. Have you been enjoying getting involved in the project? Yeah. Yeah, really. Uh, I think surprised. the teaching bit was really good, wasn't it? It was, wasn't it? It was really enjoyable. And you've learned from it yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Uh, <laughs> before this, I didn't have a clue about uh, any sort of gardening. I thought, no idea, really. <laughs> yeah, it's had an amazing influence. It's completely changed the nature of this estate, which um, didn't have a kind of heart or a community. And actually, most people that live on the estate do come to the garden. If they haven't actually got plots, they come and visit and chat. It's been massive. It's had a huge impact on this in the community. Like the, the plaque says, but there is, I will have bleeding. Um, since my mother died last year, I didn't want to go out. I didn't want to go out or anything, and then um, I, came, I came up here, and if it wasn't for the garden, I, really speaking, I don't know what I would have. This garden pulled me out of a lot of things, like, and it's just nice to be up here and to be involved in doing the planting and learning so much about plants of Mark and, and Andrew. The local doctor's surgery has recently commented that the amount of prescriptions for painkillers, antidepressants and sick notes and things like that has really diminished a great deal and the only contributing factor that's in the area has been this garden. When you look at the gardens they're not very big but we've got a lot of stuff growing in there. We've got lettuce, um, cabbage, beans, carrots, peas, uh, Did you say that your family are eating healthier now? Oh yeah, it's a lot healthier. Food? Community foodies, without their involvement now, and especially yourself, we wouldn't have been halfway to where we are now. We would have got there, granted, but I think several years down the line it would have ended up before. But thanks to yourselves, and you've been a real boost to us. What was good about that garden is that they'd already kind of established themselves as a community garden so I've actually been able to take it on to the next level which is to make it a commercial market garden and the funding from Foodie has been able to put infrastructure into 50 foot polytunnels, some fencing, some storage, a mini office and they're out now as a business. Um, and so I suppose it's taking it as the next level of community gardening which is to make it, to, to create income from it really. Not only has it helped to set up or inspire or support the inspiration of, of an idea. It's helped to give longevity to these projects that will then be running for many years to come. And it has been tremendous to see confidence grow and people make friendships. I think that's the, the, the thing I've taken away is that those friendships become so strong and, um, and they're looking after each other and I, I feel that um, although we're going, the officers are leaving, uh, the bonds have been strong enough to continue, so yeah, it's been a positive experience for me, growing people. Tomatoes, lettuce, carrot and corn, it's always better to water in the morn. The slugs come out at night from the damp out of sight. Cabbages and hollyhocks, never water in the sun or in your socks, but early in the morning when the day has just begun. 
jasmine, fever few, poppies, lemon, balm and mint, sweet peas and lavender will soon have run their stint. Summer is here and will soon be on its way. Get the leeks and swedes in before the shortest day. The seasons come and go, but the cycle doesn't end. With love and work together, we can help our world to mend.